Hi everyone, welcome to Irish Crochet Lace and in today's tutorial we're gonna do the irregular filling yes of course there is a helper okay this tutorial we will need crochet hooks and the thread that will gonna do the filling well in my, in my case I use yarn art iris and hook size 90 and 95 it depends on, on your tension also we will need a small cushion and a big one I use, usually use the big one to fill in the arm and necklines and the other one is for the filling on the, on the template itself. Also, we will need pins. Lots of pins here. And of course we will have the template With the motifs already attached and sewn into it. So, okay, let's get started. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the cushion. As you can see, it's very well stuffed, it's very hard, and it's got a rough surface. The reason I'm choosing this cushion is because it's very hard, and when you place the needle, the pin inside, it sticks in and it stays in there. It's very hard to remove it. So that's what we need. And also the rough surface will not allow our template to slide off. So what I do, just put the, put the template on. There's no need to buy a special template or anything. If you, you can use your regular clothing that you use. As far as it's not stretchy and it fits perfectly. And it also doesn't have any folds or anything, just as for in this case it's an A-shaped skirt. And what we do first, we place the template and we carefully place the pins all around the area that we're going to work on. Let's do, see, every 3-4 inches. cover the area of the th feeling that we are going to work on. I might just put one more here. And I might put some in the middle just to secure the template. Okay, this part is done. And we are ready to start the filling. Leave a long tail so that later when you hide the ends you have enough thread to weave inside the motifs. Right. Just make sure that my hook size matches. So I might choose 0 0.85 millimeter. It's fine, it's not sliding off and it's not sinking. Okay, so what do we start with? When you have motifs that are placed very close to each other, you might start doing the filling from shore to shore. Just like imagine this is a river, riverbed, and you're filling it. So I might as well do let me keep the camera closer. As you can see, these are the motifs that I use. And since they have the edge, it's kind of nice fluffy edge, I insert the hook under the last row into the previous. It might be easier to show 
over here on the shamrock. If you look at closely, you got a nice bleed here, bleed, and on the other side, you got the half back back loop. And there's a little rib over here, so you insert the hook under both of this of these threads. No. Okay. So you can see I've got two two threads here. And I do the stitch here. Keep the tails apart. And now I do the chains. And I have to make sure that my chains reach the side of the other motif. I do just four or five. That's okay, that's perfect. And the two ways you can attach is you remove the hook again, insert the insert it under two loops here, pull the thread, pull the hook, the loop, and the first part is done. Now I want to secure the speaker. Again, you can do the same, or you can do the double crochet, or the slip stitch, and of course, my little helper here. Okay, and as you notice, usually when I crochet motifs, I hold the hook like this. like a pen, but when I do the filling, I keep it like a knife. It's very easy to work in this case. So I do the treble here. Yes, he loves to assist. And I do the treble. So this part is done. And now to keep it irregular, you could do the fillet stitch all the way here. But since I wanted to keep more mesh like, make it complete mess, I make some chains like five or six, maybe seven. And I do the double crochet over here. Just notice I work, keep it backwards. And now we might might want to use a pin to place it like this, so we know that the, this cell will go here. And. We might do the, the treble here. Oh, he's not happy. I'm not playing with him. So he went off. Eating the papers that I have left. I have to apologize for the not publishing any tutorials for the three months. I'm working on my IT grade now. So last week we had a lot of tests and exams here. So if you noticed, of course, he dropped a thread. And I might do the stitch here, or I can do it over here. As I say, the free filling is a kind of free form. And might as well add some pins here and <clears throat> I want to make the hexagon here so I insert the hook pull the thread do the treble and we have nice shape hexagon here we have pentagon this one is a hexagon 
and we continue and over here as you see we grab the loops from the edge if we make the stitch here it might pull pull out all the stitches of the edging but what we do here instead we make two and we grab some stitches from the row below and with two chains okay we can place the pin here we make the stitch inside the chain not underneath but inside because in this case I wanted the, the filling be solid again just one second he switched on no. Let me close the computer otherwise we'll have this strange soundtrack and again we continue like this might do the stitch over here Here we might want to make a pentagon into the pico. You see when you do the filling you should make all you should always try to make as many hexagons and pentagons rather than squares even diamonds are okay because they make the, they'll make you look your mesh looking more natural as I probably mentioned earlier I prefer to make the feeling that looks like the cracked earth you know when you have a drought and the earth, the, the earth gets cracks on, on, on the surface so that's this is my feeling looks like this part looks like a fillet, fillet mesh and this one is more irregular so this is how you do it, you do it from, from shore to shore I might end up here and come back and then go over here again to these flowers and so on so it's just a little bit of geometry so when, when you do the filling first you have to know where you plan to make your stitch So there's a trick that I call the Y stitch. We do the two yarn overs, we do the one stitch over here, and I want to place the stitch over here. The distances here is too big, so I make another Y stitch. One goes over here, the one goes here. On the shamrock and now we have a set of stitches and yarn overs and we'll work them one by one so every time we we'll make two stitches at a time there's one two again we have stitch and the yarn over work them two stitches and we join here as you can see, with one go we filled pretty big space with a filling. And sometimes you end up in a situation where you need, well, you don't have space to fill, but you end up with a flower. You might cut the thread. But you also might do something like this. You do the chain, you grab any stitch here, like this one, pull the thread, 
you're kind of attaching it to to the motif itself make another stitch and come over here this is a, I usually do when I have to go if I had the filling already down here and I ended up in, in this place I might go over over the motif with kind of this set of three chains and a slip stitch I might leave, leave oh, go back to this place and continue the filling but since I have a sp plenty of space here I just continue working with the filling to the treble over here as you can see we got, we got kind of diamond here well actually again it's a pentagon and stitch over here there's one thing that when you do the irregular filling avoid making filling that you probably used to is the French or the fillet mesh just keep it like this and continue so I might skip this this loop this set of chains and do the treble into the next one it's not a treble Do the treble here. When you work inside the chain, try to grab two threads instead of one. In this case, you won't have a big hole here at the place where you join the, the stitches. Okay, so we got here. Do the slip stitch. disaster is getting jealous and destroying my bedroom okay so well in this case well I don't like the thing that I have here so I might add just a treble to avoid the regular mesh over here again I grab the stitches from the edge and go inside to grab the one below it's a French marigold flower so you know how to work with it now okay there's one more okay when you do the f join the motifs make sure that when you do the stitch the thread comes out on the right side and it's not twisted or anything So this is generally it and in the next tutorial I'll try to to do the leaf for the French marigold and I hopefully I hope it will be done this week since this week we have no lessons nor anything and I can enjoy crochet without studying C++ and IT essentials so this is it as you can see in 20 minutes we've done quite a bit of space here so you can practice ask questions on YouTube and then if, uh, well 
I'll try to make more, more tutorials if you find any problems with this. Okay, stay tuned. Bye.